trabajado muchísimo para prepararse sus, sus micrófonos, sus aparatos, sus audífonos. Eh, un saludo muy respetuoso y caluroso por estar en este bello país y la oportunidad de tener una audiencia en cómo, con, con parte de los países del Caribe, lo que nos llama mucho, mucho la atención, pero nos agrada tanto haberlo alcanzado, ¿no? Lograr la participación de, de la sociedad civil de, eh, de ba Bahamas. ¿Es así? Bahamas. ¿Ya? No vas. No vas. No. Uh, eh, nuestro saludo respetuoso a las autoridades del ilustre estado de Bahamas con, con mucho eh, cariño de poder realizar esta audiencia con la participación de, y la presencia de, de, de las autoridades del estado. Y nuestra audiencia, que tenemos un, un lleno, un lleno eh, de la presencia de todos ustedes por acompañarnos a pesar de que estamos como fuera ya de, de la programación del tiempo, pero eh, quiero expresarles que para la comisión estas eh, audiencias constituyen una, una fórmula, un instrumento que le permite a la comisión un trabajo de acercamiento. No se trata de juzgar, de, de decidir cosas, se trata de una oportunidad de escuchar, de poder eh, colocar a las partes en esta, en este, en esta posición de, 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 de conversar, de, de, expo, de expresar sus puntos de vista, lo que para la comisión es trascendental en una de nuestras responsabilidades, saber, conocer, monitorear cómo están los derechos humanos en toda la región. Entonces, mi especial agradecimiento por esta oportunidad. Y siendo nuestra última audiencia de esta jornada, de esta intensa jornada, quiero recalcar lo que hemos estado señalando en todas nuestras audiencias, nuestro agradecimiento a el ilustre Estado de Jamaica por la oportunidad que nos ha brindado de celebrar nuestro 172 periodo de sesiones. Como un hecho histórico, la primera vez en 60 años que cumple este año la creación de la Comisión Interamericana, la primera vez que lo celebramos en un país del Caribe y que esperamos poder hacer en cada, en cada año un periodo de sesiones en estas bellas tierras. Bahamas. No, 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 no quise decirlo, pero, pero sí, Bahamas. Sí. sí. Eh, es parte de nuestro compromiso en el plan estratégico de la comisión un plan que, que nos guía nuestras actuaciones 2017-2021, está esta responsabilidad que tiene la Comisión de este acercamiento, de, de, de establecer una comunicación eh, permanente con los países del Caribe, buscar precisamente eh, act, eh, actos, acciones que nos permitan consolidar esa integración fuerte, real, permanente, firme de todos los países del Caribe. 
Eh, tenemos en esta oportunidad eh, una especial, una especial eh, audiencia. Eh, no tengo, ese es, ah, no, se me enredó. Ese, ¿viste? No es. The situation of no, ese ya. Ya. Sí, una, una eh, audiencia muy importante con una actualidad en todo el continente y muy particularmente eh, por situaciones específicas de algunos países. Y la, 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 hemos titulado esta audiencia la, Los derechos de las personas migrantes en Bahamas. Voy a, a darle a la sociedad civil, a los representantes de la sociedad civil, la palabra por 15 minutos. Les voy a pedir que se identifiquen para que en nuestro registro quede el nombre de ustedes y la organización que representan para, para tener entonces nuestra oportunidad de escucharles. Igualmente, al ilustre, la representación del, del ilustre Estado de Bahamas, le vamos a dar 15 minutos y las mismas indicaciones para su eh, presentación de quienes intervienen en el día de hoy. Inmediatamente, la palabra. Good morning, commissioners, government of the Bahamas. Commissioners, my name is Stephanie St. Fleur. On behalf of my colleagues, I would like to thank you for your continued attention to human rights challenges in the Bahamas. With me, my colleagues, Mr. Luby George, Mr. Darren Thompson, Mr. Fred Smith, Queen's Consul, and Mr. Jovis, Joseph Darvel. I wish to share with you a very troubling video. It was two days ago. It shows a Bahamian citizen being violently dragged from her home practically naked by Bahamas immigration. Her home was targeted because of her Haitian heritage. Wild cases. Regrettably, this kind of violent and abusive behavior is typical. Four years ago, Rights Bahamas, the Caribbean Institute for Human Rights and Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights, presented human rights challenges facing migrants in the Bahamas to the commission. We are grateful for this opportunity to update the commission today. Regrettably, most of the same violations continues. I'll begin with the summary of the situation of migrants and their descendants. In November 2014, a new policy required all persons in the Bahamas to have documentation providing they had a legal right to be in the Bahamas. This overwhelmingly targeted migrants and persons of Haitian descent. The Bahamas started mass raids of migrants' communities and Haitian descent and often illegally arresting citizens, like the woman you see in the video, and legal residents. This continues. Immigration regularly engages in illegal roadblocks of those who appear Haitian. They are arrested and detained. They raid, they raid communities based on ethnic Haitian profiling. The abuse extends to other nationalities as well. A terrible example of this is of a Jamaican woman, Claudia Bethel. She has authorized us to use her name. She was married to a Bahamian man. She has a valid residency visa. Despite this, in December 2014, she was illegally arrested and in police custody raid and illegally detained by immigration. During the four days she was in immigration custody, she was repeatedly raped by a senior immigration officer. The criminal rape charge was dismissed at preliminary inquiries and never went to trial. Her civil trial starts three weeks from now. In at least five cases, the Bahamas illegally deported people born in the Bahamas. 
Since 2015, the Bahamas has become even more intolerant of Haitian migrants and their descendants, targeting them with increasingly hostile rhetoric and social policies. The government is seeking to institutionalize and legalize discrimination as part of a proposed new Immigration Act, the New Nationality Immigration and Asylum Bill. Perversely, the Bahamas seeks to make stateless persons who were born in the Bahamas aliens and liable to be deported to Haiti, when at the same time annually giving thousands of Haitian work visas to come to the Bahamas and investors' residency and citizenship. In late 2017, the Bahamas broadcast a terrifying ultimatum to migrants and illegal citizens, commanding them to voluntarily return to their country of origin or face aggressive pursuit and deportation in the year of 2018. Panic struck in the Bahamas. Over the last two years, the Bahamas has escalated efforts to demolish the homes of 7,000 persons of Haitian ethnic origin. Rights Bahamas has obtained a temporary restraining order from the courts until trial. <coughs> Public school continues to turn away, public school continues to illegally turn away children born in the Bahamas, you can look, whose parents lack and themselves documentation. The University of the Bahamas also discriminate against young citizens in waiting by applying different tuition tariffs and requiring proof of nationality and residency before enrollment. Citizens in waiting are persons born in the Bahamas who register and are waiting to receive their citizenship paper. Because Bahamas delays or refuse to register them as citizens, they have huge challenges. Migrants' community in the Bahamas live in fear of verbal and physical abuse. The anxiety of their homes being invaded and of being expelled from the only country they know as home. They live in a state of terror. They are scared of the corrupt immigration which routinely used detention as a means to exhort bribes in return for release. We are thankful to be here today during the Commission's first period of session in the Caribbean. Louis? Thank you, Stephanie. My name is Louis Georges and I am the Director of International Affairs for Rights Bahamas. I thank the Commission for this opportunity. Our nationality and immigration laws and policy lead to discrimination predominantly against persons of Haitian descent estimated at 25% of the population. It is the largest and most established ethnic group. Anti-Haitian prejudice is deeply ingrained in the Bahamas. Haitians are a scapegoat for any problem. The Bahamas has a powerful constitution and laws that on paper respect human rights. Immigration officers have evenly have, have even slightly less powers than the police, not more. We have a presumption of innocence. The law provides for deportation on very stringent condi conditions with rights of appeal. Despite this, immigration operates as a super police force outside of the control of the constitution and laws. This remains the position despite successful cases in court in which immigration has been condemned. The Bahamas persist in encouraging and promoting discrimination against persons of Haitian descent for political benefit. The illegal immigration actions include random and mass raids, checkpoints, and roadblocks where civilians are made to show proof of their status on the spot and face detention and illegal deportation. The Bahamas is guilty of state-sanctioned, institutionalized terror against the Haitian community. Freedom of movement in the Bahamas no longer exists. Everyone is now subject to random stops, searches, and detentions. Nowhere is the complete disrespect for human rights more evident than at the immigration detention center. There is only one legal prison in the Bahamas at Fox Hill. The detention center is illegal. No law provides for its existence. Yet people face indefinite and savage detention with beatings and sexual abuse such as Claudia Bethel. In 2015, this commission requested the Bahamas to protect persons at the detention center because their lives were at risk of harm. The government did not respond to our April 23, 2019 formal request to visit the detention center and has repeatedly ignored or refused our request because it was not, quote, convenient for authorities at the time. Migrants have been illegally imprisoned for years. 
Rights Bahamas regularly issues habeas corpus to free illegally detained prisoners. Freed prisoners recount feeling trapped like animals in cages. Rights Bahamas has dozens of civil cases before the courts as we speak. In a case waiting for judgment, a Kenyan man was detained for six and a half years. He was subject to violent beatings, he was tear gassed, he contracted contagious diseases including tuberculosis. Women and young children are now illegally imprisoned in a safe house at a secret location where even their Bahamian citizen husband and father can't find to visit. They are subject to sexual violence. The rooms have no adequate vi ventilation. They are not allowed to exercise. They are forced to shower with no privacy and according to at least one report in the presence of male guards. Claudia Bethel was kept in the custody of a male immigration officer and taken to his home where he raped her. There is no legal aid. Lawyers' access to clients is severely restricted even if permitted. Fred Smith, Queen's Counsel, who is here with us, was physically removed from the detention center by six armed guards while attempting to see his client. Language issues are a great barrier. The government is now attempting to pass laws to legalize its policies of abuse. The proposed new Immigration Act seeks to establish the detention center as legal. It makes persons born in the Bahamas who have a right to citizenship, quote unquote, aliens, liable to be deported, even liable to be deported if they do not register between 18 and 19 years old. Under the Constitution, children born to foreign parents have 12 months to apply for citizenship once they turn 18. If they miss this deadline and have no other nationality, they become stateless. There are many situations where 18-year-olds register but are still waiting for a, for a certificate up to 27 years later. They are non, they are non people, an outlaw caste with no practical civil rights. Moreover, teenagers eligible for the right to apply for citizenship at age 18 may not have the ability to do so because there is no education and no legal or financial assistance. Current policy and the proposed Immigration Act grants residency instead of citizenship to people who miss this deadline. Thus, thousands of people born in the Bahamas must pay about $3,000 every year to work and live in the country they were born in. Even if they pay this exorbitant amount, it still affects their ability to, to obtain stable employment, attend university, or po open a bank account, get health insurance, or even public medical attention. They will not be able to own land, own shares in companies, or get business licenses. Their children will not be citizens even though they were born in the Bahamas. There are, th there are first, second, and third generations in the Bahamas that are stateless. The proposed act fails to address the continuing roadblocks which deny children of undocumented Haitian migrants the legal right to public education and drive them from the classrooms and from the University of the Bahamas. By all indication, the government of the Bahamas intends to maintain migrants and their descendants in a position of social, political, and economic inequality. Darwin. Thank you. Good morning. I will, set out, I, will, I will briefly set out the continuing violations by the Bahamas of the inter-American and the international standards on the rights of migrants. Detention of migrants at the detention center is arbitrary, prolonged, and indefinite. The inter-American system is clear that in the context of migration procedures, Detention should be a measure of last resort. It should be used for the shortest period of time possible, and alternative to detention should be sought. Similarly, the unsanitary, rat-infested, unhygienic, and overcrowded conditions at the detention center violate inter-American and United Nations standards. Lawyers, and national and international organizations are denied access to the detention center to monitor these conditions, even during regular visiting hours. The Bahamas also has no legislation for refugees, 
in violation of its international obligations under the 1951 UN Convention relating to the, U to the status of refugees and its 1967 protocol. The Inter-American Commission has emphasized that international law requires states to implement effective safeguards to protect individuals with a legitimate claim for refugee status, asylum seekers, those at risk of refoulement, and persons at risk of statelessness. Regrettably, the Constitution discriminates on gender for citizenship to spouses and children in violation of international law prohibiting gender discrimination. The proposed Immigration Act also maintains such discrimination. Finally, because of political encouragement, human rights defenders in the Bahamas continue to confront a hostile public environment that puts their security, free speech, and work at risk. The Commission has requested the Bahamas put in place protective measures for multiple members of the delegation present here today. And despite this, members of this delegation are routinely and publicly accused of being traitors and threatened with prosecution for sedition. We come before you again today with the same appeal. Violations of the rights of migrants in the Bahamas have not been addressed, and they are getting worse. In conclusion, we again request that the Commission conduct an on-site visit to the Bahamas, including an unrestricted visit to the detention center and safe house. We request information from the state on how its immigration policies and practices are compatible with its obligations under international human rights law, and that the Commission continue to monitor the situation in the Bahamas. Lastly, we request of the Bahamas government to stop policies of discrimination and abuse, revise immigration and nationality laws, stop arbitrary arrest and detention, only, sorry, detentions and deportations, and use immigration detention only as a last resort in compliance with international human rights law. Also, we ask that the state ensure that national and international civil society organizations have access to the detention center for monitoring purposes and ensure that no child is barred from attending school due to a lack of documentation. We ask that the government engage regularly with civil society in a constructive dialogue to jointly address the problems affecting human rights challenges in the Bahamas, and lastly, to comply with the request by the Commission to implement precautionary measures in place for members of this delegation and ensure that all human rights defenders are protected from retaliation. Thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias. Le damos inmediatamente la palabra a la ilustre representación del Estado. Thank you. Madam President uh, and distinguished commissioners of this honorable commission, petitioners and presenters, distinguished guests, observers, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. May I first of all congratulate all of the commissioners on their appointments and convey special greeting to the commissioners, to commissioner, to the commissioner, the president who is the daughter of the Caribbean soil and serves as the repertoire to the Bahamas. I'm pleased to appear before you today representing the Commonwealth of the Bahamas at this thematic hearing on the rights of migrants and their descendants in the Bahamas, which the commission has convened at the request of Rights Bahamas Limited and the JFK Kennedy and the John F. Kennedy Rights Group. I am joined by other members of my delegation in the name of Ms. Jewel Major, Chief Counsel in the Office of the Attorney General, and Mrs. Ferguson, Assistant Director, Immigration Department of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. While no state wishes to have to defend allegations of right, vi rights violations, the Bahamas has always been tri transparent in its efforts to protect human rights. Whether in the context of immigration policies, the operations of the detention center, or general human rights concerns, Therefore, we welcome this opportunity 
to continue the dialogue that started with the Commission during the thematic hearing in 2015 on migrant issues. We also undertake to continue our full cooperation with the Commission. In fact, following the 2015 hearing, at the invitation of the government, members of the Commission visited the Bahamas and presented and, present, and, pres and partnered with the Eugene DePuch Law School in delivering academic presentations on the inter-American human rights system and role of the Commission. The government had also extended an invitation to the Commission to visit the Carmichael Road Detention Center, which at the time did not permit. And on behalf of the Most Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Hubert Minnis, I take this opportunity to extend that invitation at a time convenient for you. Petitioner's submissions. The government of the Bahamas has submitted a formal response to the petitioner's submissions in which it has attempted to comprehensively address the issues raised. For my presentation, and having regard to the time constraints, I only intend to provide a bird's eye view of the main issues conveyed in the presentation. Hopefully, my delegation and I will be able to provide any further information or address any questions which this distinguished commission may have. General context. Before considering a, dis a discussion of any issues, it is important to appreciate the, mi appreciate the migration context in the Bahamas. The Bahamas has attracted a steady and increasing flow of migration from Haiti, from the Republic of, ha of Haiti, for the greater half of a century. In the early 1960s, the Haitian community ac accounted for just 3% of the population of the Bahamas. Today, they account for over 20% of the population of just over 375,000 people. This exponential increase in the Haitian migrant population, fueled to some extent by, by porous geographical borders, has occurred despite repeated attempts by the government over the years to repatriate uh, Haitian migrants pursuant to, the, to a series of bilater bilateral accords with the government of Haiti. For example, between 2016 to May 5, 2019, the Department of Immigration deported some 11,000 uh, mig Haitian migrants. The influx of Haitian migrants was also primarily re primary was also the primary reason for the establishment of the Carmichael Road Detention Center. Although in recent times, the migrant origins, origin countries have extended to include Caribbean countries, Africa, China, and South, and South America. In spite of the erroneous, the enormous drain on its national finances and social services, the Bahamas has over the years, and consistently with its resources, sought to continually improve the facilities, systems, and procedures for dealing with undocumented migrants. This has been done in cooperation with the regional, with regional and international human rights bodies and organizations with respect to the dignity of the individual and the rule of law, and as far as possible, having regard to the international obligation of the Bahamas. Preliminary points. I now turn to our written submissions. It will be noted it would, be, it would be noted. Ten minutes ago. Wow. It would be noted that the government has made uh, several preliminary points in relation to the submissions by the petitioners. Okay, thank you. <laughs> they deal with two main points. The firstly, the lack of an opportunity to make eliminate objections to the request for a thematic hearing, which may have avoided a full hearing on matters which the government considered as unsubstantiated and duplic duplicitive. And second, the need to respect the principles requiring exhaustion of domestic remedies in light of the petitioner's request to have the commission, the commission deal with matters that are currently before the domestic courts. We do not wish to press these issues beyond what is indicated, although we think it is important to, to reference uh, them in passing. Issues raised by the petitioners. As pointed out in our preliminary observations, ma many of the allegations suf uh, suffered, many of the allegations suffer from lack of proper substantiation. In fact, many are based on generalized allegations and claims and newspaper articles in some cases, generated 
by the petitioners themselves, and I refer to a document uh, commissioners that is produced by the petitioners, in which a picture is presented of a man clad in, in military fatigue with a dog with a pistol in his hand, and this picture is in a document that says, Immigration Rights in the Bahamas. The unsuspecting person might presume that this picture was taken in the Bahamas. Not so. And I challenge the, uh, the petitioner to substantiate the same. There are other documents in here. A fugitive from America who came to the Bahamas and was humanely deported back to the Bahamas and was dubbed the barefoot to the US who was dubbed the barefoot bandit, is here. And you would think that this is something. There are other pictures. We don't have this many white police officers in the Bahamas. We would love to have more. But it's a document that is printed in, in English, Creole, and Spanish. There's one more I will refer to. A lady with, with bloodied hands, with police officers, is in a document that was sent around the world printed in Spanish, English, and, and Creole. And one would think, on reading this document, that it occurred in the Bahamas. No such thing. And I put the, the petitioners, challenged the petitioners to affirm that it did happen. I will come back to that point later, later on in my submissions. As pointed out in our preliminary observations, Many of the allegations suffered, suffer from lack of proper sub, uh, substantiation. In fact, many are based on generalized allegations and claims, and newspaper articles, in some cases, generated by the petitioners themselves. However, the government has addressed them under the heads in which they are presented. And I will highlight some points. Entrenched racial discrimination and xenophobia against Haitians and those of Haitian descent. Excuse me. With respect to the allegation of entrenched racial discrimination and xenophobia, it is expected that in some society where there are, sufficient, where there are, there are significant migrant population, there are, some, there, are, there are bound to be persons or pocket of persons who harbor anti-migrant sentiments. Such behavior is neither tolerated nor condoned and certainly not encouraged by the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. It is also wrong to portray the remarks alleged, uh, allegedly attributed to a single immigration officer as being representative of Bahamian immigration authorities or Bahamian authorities generally. The policy of immigration and other departments who are required to interact with the vulnerable persons is always shown to be respectful, to respect the dignity of the individuals. Further, remarks made by the Right Honorable Prime Minister in the context of discussing CSME and pointing out demographic differences between, between Haitians and the Caribbean migrants in the, in the Bahamas. Statistics, statistics which have also been found by independent research group, including the IOM, similarly do not evidence any Haitian bias. Restrictive constitutional provisions. Dealing, five moments, dealing with the claims of, of the Bahamas, Dealing with, dealing with the claims that the Bahamas has prohibitive anti-citizen uh, provisions, it is, it is no secret that the Constitution of the Bahamas is not gender neutral and treats men and women differently and, and unequally with respect to their ability to transmit citizens to their children and spouses. But in fact, the large number of persons affected by these gender provisions of the Constitution of the Bahamas are men and women uh, Constitution, constitution are Bahamian men and women, and their descendants are not migrants. In this regard, the government has spared no efforts in trying to arm the con uh, in trying to amend the constitutional provisions. And in recent times, we've had two referendums, both of which went to the people and failed. The provisions which affect Haitian migrants most directly is Article Seven, which provides for all born in the Bahamas who cannot claim citizenship through descent to apply between the ages of 18, and 19, uh, 18 years and 19. The government is acutely aware of the, vul of the vulnerability of persons who fall into these uh, waiting categories and has taken legislative steps to ameliorate the position of persons whose citizenship status 
is uncertain in the interim or whose ability to claim nationality of the state is unsure. The legislation provides for several uh, categories of persons to apply for what is called a Bangalore permit uh, during the waiting period. This is without prejudice to their right to apply for citizenship or to be considered for registration under the Nationality Act. Okay. Draft Nationality and Asylum Bill. As evidence of its continuing commitment to reform issues uh, relating to nationality and immigration, the government has recently commissioned a law reform commissioner to pr produce a comprehensive draft nationality and immigration bill. Some of the notable provisions of the, na of the NIA bill includes the creation of an advisory commission, provisions for the minister to give reasons for refusal of citizenship, creation of an immigration board, the creation of an immigration appeal tribunal, provisions of deportation, and creation of uh, a formal process for asylum. And Madam Co President and Commissioners, uh, the Rights Bahamas has been afforded the opportunity as a part of a civil society to be a part of that consultative process. And I do understand that they have given their, their views on the legislation. Discrimination, discriminatory immigration policies and practices. Give me the time, please. The petition also attack, attack what they call discrimination, discriminatory immigration policies and practices going back to 2014 initiative where this is, were addressed before the commission in 2015. With respect to the allegations of arbit arbitrary deportation of persons born in the Bahamas, it is not the policy of the government to deport anyone who can prove legitimate rights to be registered as a citizen under the constitution or who has applied and is awaiting response. The government accepts, however, that on occasion persons are being deported or who allege alleged to be in the Bahamas. In most cases, where such persons are being deported, it was due to questions about identity and or legitimacy of documentations. But I can assure the Commission that we have a fearless, fair, and an, an impartial judiciary who is always, an, an, and in an unquestionable environment, has done their duty. Delay in processing applications. The government accepts that there are intolerable delays generally with respect to immigration processes, including the processing of citizenship applic applications for various permits. To this end, the government has invested some $30 million in IT upgrades for immigration department. Persons in the detention center. Uh, the commissioners will be aware by, by, from our submissions that we have made reference to all of the improvements at the, uh, the detention center. As a matter of fact, an international organization has commended the Bahamas for the works done thus far to assist persons in the Bahamas who are in the uh, care and custody of the Bahamas authorities to see that their rights are protected. There's also the shantytown issues that was raised, uh, Madam Commissioner and, and, and President and Commissioners. These matters are squarely before uh, the domestic courts and are being dealt with. And there has been no accusation that the court has not conducted itself in these matters in a fair, impartial, and impartial way. As a matter of fact, there has been an amendment to, to, to the injunction that persons who live in these communities are not to construct any more facilities while this matter is being dealt with by the court. I know that reference was made to a lady who was alleged to have been uh, taken into custody by an immigration officer and raped. That matter went before the court and nobody questions the integrity of the court and the court gave a decision where the court found that the evidence gave by the lady was, was unacceptable and so the matter was dismissed uh, at a no case hearing. The gentleman, the gentleman involved has brought an action against the government for malicious prosecution and I understand that the lady has brought, also brought civil proceedings against the gentleman. But these matters are properly before the courts and uh, are not, not to be played out in the court of uh, public opinion. 
There's also, and I'm skipping through because I realize that there's, a, there's an issue for time. There's one thing, one other matter that I would like to address. The, petition, the petitioners allege that the comments are attributed to the Attorney General accusing them or any of them of disseminating offensive information and deliberately deceptive and misleading information uh, implicitly intended to place restrictions on their rights. There's been no uh, reports to the to, the com to any of the authorities in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas that the welfare of any of these persons, two of whom I know very well, and I take as a father and a brother, that their interests are threatened within the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. But I say, on the part of the most honorable prime minister, if that is the case, that the authorities are to be provided with the names and we shall deal with them. But when the Attorney General speaks about uh, inflammatory and deceptive information, and you produce documents like this and others, and you put pictures where the unsuspecting, the unsuspecting observer would think that they're occurring in the Bahamas, then we have, we have some difficulties. But I will end by saying this. It is a pleasure to come and present before you and that this honorable commission or your designate is always welcome in the, to the Commonwealth of the Bahamas to inspect our facilities. I thank you. Muchísimas gracias, ambas partes, por la, toda la información que hemos podido recibir. Tenemos ahora en, en nuestro procedimiento darle la palabra a los comisionados para que puedan hacer algunos comentarios o preguntas. Eh, no, no, no pudo estar el comisionado... Luis Ernesto Vargas al inicio, porque estaba en otra, en otra audiencia, pero como es la audiencia de migrantes, eh, eh, que es su relatoría, entonces le vamos a dar a él la palabra eh, para, para iniciar. Eh, gracias, presidente. Y además, además, eres también relator de país. No. Ah, tú. Okay. Ya, yeah. ya. Yeah. Podrían empezar más bien por la relatora país. Si ¿Empezar tú, dice Lucho? Bueno. <risa> bueno, eh, un saludo muy especial a las partes, tanto a la sociedad civil que ha comparecido y que nos ha dado la información, que ha podido escuchar la comisión, como a los representantes del Ilustre Estado de Bahamas. Pues realmente lo que entendemos es que hay una posición muy opuesta entre las dos partes en cuanto a la información que hemos recibido. Yo por eso y porque pues lamentablemente estaba en otra audiencia de la que acaban de, de informarme, ya, ya la terminamos, que estaban en esta, eh, no pude escuchar a cabalidad, pero sí entiendo que el gobierno de Bahamas, y lo han reiterado ahora al final, nos ha hecho una invitación para que vayamos a eh, mirar las instalaciones y la forma como se está atendiendo en el centro de detención de eh, Carmichael Road. Entonces, por esa circunstancia, quería simplemente manifestar a nombre de la Comisión que la Relatoría de Migrantes está pues, muy interesada en aceptar esa invitación y que con todo gusto iremos a hacer eh, pues una especie de visita en in situ a, a ese lugar después del mes de julio para que eh, hagamos la coordinación respectiva con la Secretaría de la Comisión Interamericana de Derechos Humanos a efecto de que podamos asistir. Le agradecemos muchísimo, primero que todo, la invitación y en segundo lugar, yo creo que allá podríamos perfectamente verificar tanto la información que nos ha dado la sociedad civil el día de hoy como la respuesta que ha dado el ilustre Estado de Bahamas y creo que ahí despejaríamos muchísimas de las dudas que se han suscitado con información tan, tan distinta como la que hemos recibido. Entonces, por esas circunstancias simplemente me limitaría a eso y a dar los agradecimientos a la sociedad civil por la información que han suministrado y que va a ser objeto de análisis en esa visita in situ que podamos hacer. Eh, muchísimas gracias, Presidenta. Gracias, comisionado Vargas. Comisionada Margaret. Thank you very much, Madam President. Um, 
Uh, as the country rapporteur, I'm the rapporteur for women's rights, and in addition to that, the rapporteur for Afro-descendant rights, um, and against racism and racial discrimination. I carry a heavy burden <laughs> in relation to Bahamas. And um, I have to say that those who know my history know that I've done for over 40 years. I, uh, was in the women's um, rights movement in Jamaica and headed um, the organization, national organization here and that in the Caribbean, as well as the children's rights organization, national organization here. And during those years, um, we did uh, uh, um, take issue with the re um, situation of women married women in the Bahamas who couldn't pass their citizenship to their husbands. And you made reference to the fact that in relation to that, that in relation to that issue, these people are Bahamian men and women, but not so because the Bahamian man who marries a non-Bahamian woman, the wife can assume Bahamian citizenship. But, but woe betide the Bahamian woman who marries a Bahamian man. This has been the situation since the year back when I was in the women's movement and it's still the situation today. And we, the, um, the president and I went to the Bahamas in February um, um, and we met with government officials and civil society. And of course, that came up as well. And the, that, the, that the situation is this. As a result, there are so many stateless children who were born in the Bahamas and cannot get citizenship because they, are, they cannot provide the sufficient documentation to, in order to get it. And as you say, even when they're 18, they have to apply for citizenship within a certain time, or they miss the boat if they exceed that time. This is extremely difficult to accept. And the commission wants to work with Bahamas to see how we can resolve this um, um, issue. And in relation to that, uh, we are asking in pursuit of our mandate that you send us, please, a copy of the NIA bill. Because, oh, that was, well, we, well we, we don't see that at this stage. Yes, but it was sent, it was sent to, to the secretariat. Great, lovely, because we, we would wish to, we need to analyze it and make our recommendations to you in pursuit of our mandate. And we would um, try to do that as soon as possible. As the country rapporteur, I also accept very readily the invitation that you've stated here today for us to um, visit the Bahamas and um, um, vis visit the um, Carmichael Road Detention Center. Um, but I should say that knowing this, what we ought to monitor in the Bahamas, it would be several commissioners who would be um, on that visit. Yeah, and we look forward to it. Because we need to, this is it, we need to work with you in partnership, both with the state and with civil society. And in this way, from our experience, we come to resolve certain situations which um, might be proving difficult. There is a matter of the referendums, which in relation to the citizenship of married women, which I couldn't understand, but I understand it is within your law that you must have that referendum. But well, you know that, the, that within our mandate, we can, in fact, if we do have a case presented in relation to that issue, that ultimately we could, we could say, fine, that the Bahamas has to amend its law. 
You know that. We could. But we haven't got to that stage yet. I am dropping a hint for civil society. <laughs> but you know, truly. And, but we don't really wish for things to get to that stage. That's why we like to work in partnership um, with, with the state in resolving um, these things. Um, we are, have been aware about the situation in, in, relations to, um, in relation to um, Haitian migrants in particular. We are aware of the fact that even though you have over 700 islands, Bahamas is, is, is small, but it's not that small. It has several islands. But anyway, uh, the size of, of the migrant um, is, uh, diff, um, incidents is, is great. <coughs> for a small country, which is why we do offer our technical assistance and support and partnership. Excuse me? Ooh. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and so we will, um, um, the Secretariat will communicate with you so that we can, as early as possible, um, um, utilize the invitation. There are lots of, lots of issues which we can discuss now, but we do not have the time to do so. I would ask that if you, at the, your responding period, if you do, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have the time. I, can, I know that. Uh, you'll only have a couple of minutes. Um, if you could send us the rest of your, your statement. And, um, to, you can send it to us in writing, the rest of it, if you, you, because you skipped okay. some parts. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you can send us the whole thing. Not now. Okay. You can't do one now. So I think I will have to stop because we do have we do have further commitments this afternoon and like all of you humans we have to eat lunch. But before I skip so I don't intervene again, I want to welcome all those who are here who have never been to Jamaica before. And and I want you to try all the great things here in Jamaica, including the best coffee in the world. Right. Including the best white rum in the world. <laughs> Yo le voy a pedir a Margaret que me tenga preparado un buen saquito de café. And including our food, jerk chicken, and all of you go to Bob Marley's museum and enjoy some reggae, the real original reggae there, and have a bit of a dance. Thank you. Okay. ok, Margaret. Muy bien, muchas gracias. Sí, hay que. Nosotros hemos estado desde el viernes, nos vamos mañana y no he podido ir a ver la playa linda. <ríe> bien, eh, yo quisiera eh, expresar a ambas partes nuestro agradecimiento profundo por, por, por tener esta oportunidad. De, ese es lo que es la audiencia, ese momento de escuchar a las partes a las posesiones, eh, y nos permite tener, decía el comisionado Vargas, dice, como son dos posiciones, entonces nuestro compromiso, nuestra responsabilidad es ver cómo estas posiciones podemos irlas eh, revisando, trabajándolas para evaluar precisamente no, no la certeza de una u otra, sino el punto de solución de una situación que puede estar eh, presentándose y que necesitamos evaluarla. Yo quisiera hacer un apuntalamiento muy específico al Estado. Yo le escuché, hay una protección constitucional y cuando hablamos de que tenemos una protección constitucional, pareciera no, que no necesitamos más nada. Es el deber de todas las autoridades cumplir con el mandato constitucional. Y quisiera saber expresamente, en, en el tema de derechos de niños, Margaret ya lo, uh, lo identificaba, no sé cuál es el número de niños apátridas que tenemos por razones de no reconocimiento pese a haber nacido en Bahamas, el Gius Sole. 
como el derecho al, al, al suelo. Nací aquí, soy jamaicano. ¿no? Y, 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 y si la norma constitucional, esa es la disposición, me interesaría saber cuáles son precisamente los obstáculos para que esa protección constitucional, ese derecho constitucional, los niños lo, lo alcancen. Para, porque yo parto de que las la Bahamas tienen en su constitución un reconocimiento de la adquisición de la nacionalidad por haber nacido en el territorio. O sea, necesitaríamos saber cuáles son esos elementos que están impidiendo, están obstaculizando que se dé esa posibilidad. Eh, cuando, cuando decimos que el tiempo que tienen es los 18 años, si pasan el día de su cumpleaños, entonces no la pueden adquirir. Quizás eso es una, es una realidad que requiere del otro punto que quiero señalar, el acceso al sistema educativo, la formación de todos los niños y las niñas, incluyendo los niños que, que tienen una, eh, bueno, que, han, que emigraron sus padres, la, por la razón que fuere, no han adquirido aún su, su nacionalidad. O sea, eh, ¿cuál es la condición del de sistema educativo que para su acceso por parte de todos, sin, sin exclusión de ninguna clase? Porque si hablamos de la protección constitucional, lo que estamos diciendo es que los niños no no van a tener vida solo a los 18 años, han tenido vida desde que nacieron, y nacieron en el país. Y si nacieron en el país, deben ir a la escuela de este país, porque es su país. El trámite administrativo puede ser efectivamente, un, y es, no es que puede ser, es la organización del Estado de Bahamas con sus procedimientos, sus trámites, que es así, tiene que, eh, tiene que haberlo, ese es el orden. Pero, eh, pero, pero deben ir a la escuela, y deben ir a la escuela cuando tienen su, su, sus tres años al prenatal, a, y, y ir a su primaria, secundaria, eh, porque a los 18 años ya deben haber terminado la escuela. Y, y a los 18 años, si no tuviesen ni formación, ni recursos, ni medios, sino no, 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 no están preparados para, para, para demandar sus derechos. Entonces, ese, esa fase o esos procedimientos nos contribuirían a tener una respuesta. Nuestro, nuestro eh, yo también estoy eh, muy contenta de poder ir a Bahamas nuevamente para hacer jornadas de formación incluso, de capacitación, buscar las oportunidades de, de interactuar con las autoridades para que podamos analizar la situación y buscar puntos de, de acuerdo de cómo eh, manejar eh, eh, la, la, la situación. Y, y concluyo eh, eh, con, con el tema del de derecho de que, eh, como derecho, no detención. Y que no puede ser la respuesta la privación de la libertad. Ese es uno de nuestros estándares en el tema migratorio. El, el, no, la, la, la detención es por otras por otras circunstancias, pero están deteniendo también a los niños. Yo, yo como relatora de los derechos de niñez, particularmente quisiera tener esta información de cómo, 
por qué y cuál es la, 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 la respuesta que esta protección de las leyes, de la Constitución, del sistema de protección de la niñez, que nos preocupamos en todos los países de, de, de cómo garantizamos que los niños, por su especial condición de vulnerabilidad, tengan una protección especial. Eso también lo mandan nuestros convenios, nuestros acuerdos y también las normas del país. Entonces, ¿cómo garantizamos que esa protección la brinden todas las instituciones del país? Y el sistema de educativo debiera reaccionar para, para saber qué está pasando con esos niños que están detenidos. ¿Por qué están detenidos? ¿Cuáles son las razones? O sea, es una necesidad de articulación de todas las instituciones para alcanzar la protección. Pero hago énfasis en el derecho a no ser detenido por la condición de migrante. O sea, no, no puede, por el hecho de ser migrante, los vamos a detener. Ese, esa, hay una prohibición de, de ese, no, no es una ofensa, no es un delito. Y la prisión, la detención, es para los delitos, es para cuando la gente viola la ley. Entonces, por supuesto, habrá circunstancias, condiciones de determinadas personas. No estamos hablando de, de eso, estamos hablando de la generalidad de la circunstancia. Entonces, eh, nuestro propósito hoy al, al Estado de Bahamas, no sé si lo dije bien, eh, me gusta decir Bahamas, me gusta, eh, es, es bonito, Sí. Me, me gusta, me gusta. <risa> no. eh, para nuestra, nuestra posición, la Comisión Interamericana de Derechos Humanos, nuestro ofrecimiento para contribuir con la, lo que ustedes efectivamente estimen en lo que nosotros podemos contribuir para que estas propuestas de, de leyes, eh, que, que tengamos la oportunidad de compartir, de, de intercambiar nuestras, nuestras ideas, de formularle nuestras recomendaciones. Y sí, el, 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 el nuestro trabajo es recomendar poder, poder, poder tener esta, esta aproximación y, y sabemos que hay las la, la disposición de los, de los estados, de los países, para la protección de los derechos humanos de sus ciudadanos. Ese es el principio. Nosotros partimos como comisión del principio que los estados tienen ese, no solo la responsabilidad, es el compromiso, son nuestros ciudadanos y nuestra responsabilidad es su protección. Nosotros nos unimos a, 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 ese, a, a ese objetivo y nuestra contribución en lo que ustedes estimen pueda ser. Eh, Soledad, se me pasó tu... ¡Wow! Sí. 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 No, bien, voy, voy a darle la, la, la palabra dos minutos a... Es un poco dictatorial, ¿no? Yo puedo hablar un poco más porque tengo el micrófono y lo controlo. Pero eh, a, a Soledad, dos minutos como eh, relatora especial de los derechos económicos, sociales, culturales y ambientales. Y este es parte de ellos. Muchísimas gracias, señora presidenta. Welcome, thank you. Eh, en especial, eh, hello for all of us, all of you, from the special reporter. I will speak in Spanish. Eh, y voy a ser muy breve. Yo creo que la presidenta después también se va a referir a esto, pero el, el, el honorable estado de, de Bahamas 
eh, mencionaba la falta de agotamiento para la celebración de esta audiencia. Creo que es muy importante poner sobre la mesa que, no estamos en, que la comisión no les está juzgando, sino que es un diálogo constructivo con la idea de precisamente intercambiar informaciones y contribuir desde la comisión con toda su expertise a, a, la, a, a la generación de soluciones que el, el Honorable Estado de Bahamas está buscando para su ciudadanía. Y yo tenía dos puntos muy, muy concretos, eh, porque la relatora especial de Naciones Unidas sobre el trata de personas ha expresado eh, su preocupación en torno a, a los temas que hacen al trabajo doméstico, que afecta especialmente a la población migrante, y quisiera escuchar más a ese respecto, y también eh, la trata y el tráfico de personas que estaría afectando de una manera diferencial a la población migrante. Me gustaría saber cuáles son las medidas que han tomado. Ya la, la, la presidenta y comisionada Esmeralda uh, ha puesto el acento en muchos de los temas de, del mandato. Quizá referirme también a la cuestión del derecho a la vivienda por estos desalojos que ustedes mencionaron. Y, y lo dejaría por acá, esperando que este diálogo pues, solo haya hecho que que comenzar o re reeditarse a partir de esta audiencia y que la Comisión pueda muy pronto visitar Bahamas. Gracias. Gracias, Soledad. Eh, yo la verdad que les, les, les pido disculpas por haberme extendido. Estamos en la fase de darles nuevamente la palabra para escucharles. Son, le, les voy a dar cinco minutos. Yo sé que cinco minutos no hay, no hay mucho tiempo, pero ya eh, estamos sobre... Eh, el, el tiempo eh, de nuestra organización de la, de, de la actividad, de la audiencia, y, y le doy inmediatamente la palabra a la sociedad civil. Cinco minutos igualmente va a ser para el Estado después de la intervención. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Frederick Smith. I have been working along with Mr. Joseph Darville, for nearly 43 years in the Bahamas on human rights and environmental issues. And we do have, um, Ms. Munez, a huge human trafficking and sex tourism issue that this government is doing a lot about. I must congratulate them for that. But insofar as the issues relating to um, migrants in the Bahamas, um, I, I had like to distinguish between those Haitians who are illegally coming into the Bahamas, which is a challenge for our government, as opposed to the many thousands of people who, Madam President, because of the use solai not applying in the Bahamas, they're born in the Bahamas, and they've been there 20, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, I know, in some cases, and they don't have documentation. And so the criticism that we level against our government and which we are prepared to cooperate with them, we understand it should be a cooperation between civil society and the government. We implore the Bahamas government to stop treating those who are born in the Bahamas and who have lived there all of their lives as if they are illegal migrants and to find a way, even if you don't have to pass a referendum, pass just a, a law in Parliament giving all those who are born in the Bahamas the right to remain in the Bahamas. And they're not subject to the terror, the real terror, of being picked up at random, held in detention indefinitely, and deported. And so that is a very simple and quick fix. Doesn't need a referendum. The second point is the conditions at the Carmichael immigration detention facility have been intolerably inhuman and degrading for decades. Let's not play with this situation. And so all of the members of our delegation, all five of us, including RFK with Casey Mordecai, we love our country. We don't want to beat it internationally. We want to be proud of the Bahamas. And so we, are, we, are, we implore the government to work with us as well. We want to work with our government to try and find solutions. We are not the enemy. We love our Bahamas 
as each different government does when it gets into power. Work with us. And so although the government hasn't extended the invitation to us, Rights Bahamas, and RFK, um, Center for Justice and Human Rights, but it has extended it to the commission, we ask the representatives of the Bahamas government if they will now extend that same invitation to the human rights organizations in the Bahamas to inspect the Carmichael Detention Center regularly. We don't have to wait for commissioners from an international forum to come and police our own nation. You have citizens of your own country who want to help you do better. Use us. We are not the enemy. So we would like to work with the government to help ameliorate the conditions at the detention center. And also, as the commissioners have said, detention ought not to apply to immigrants. So the reality is, just as the government for hundreds of Cubans years ago bailed them out and, and allowed them to go into the community on condition that other members of the community return them, many, many Haitian migrants or those waiting for documentation can live and be constructive and productive members of the society instead of it costing the government hundreds of millions of dollars, as you say, to keep them in an illegal detention center. Let them out and let them work in the community. The Bahamas is a small country, but we need hundreds of thousands of more people to make it grow and produce. Geographically, it's a huge country. We should stop focusing on the fact that we have a small population and recognize that we are a member of a much larger global community and that immigrants are not criminals. They are human beings like each one of us trying to make a better life. And so the, the whole mentality, the visceral hatred and xenophobia that exists in the Bahamas has to be your government is a much more enlightened one than many of the previous ones. And I beg you, work with civil society to help change this mindset that foreigners, in particular Haitian migrants, are some kind of disease that must be banished from the Bahamas. Gracias. Estado de Bahamas. Thank you very much. I would like to start by saying once again that you're invited to inspect our facilities. Uh, in, in relations to, and I do, well, I do apologize, but our documents were sent to Washington uh, in the month of April, which has documented and responded to a lot of the accusations made. As a matter of fact, our documents provide you with pictures of what has happened in the Bahamas, and it also reference uh, 2015 uh, appearance before the commission. And it evidenced that a number of the issues raised was then de dealt with by the commission. In terms of access to schools, I can tell you that the Education Act of the Commonwealth of, of the Bahamas require every child between a certain age to be in a public school, despite the fact that we are only 375,000 persons in an archipelagic nation having to provide educational uh, facilities up and down the Commonwealth. The most honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Hubert Minnis, and his administration has reaffirmed the right for every child, regardless of status, to be in a school. Now, there is a need for some identification for that child, and I will deal with trafficking in persons ne next to ensure uh, certain verifications, but it does not go to, 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 to citizenship as to whether or not a child could be in a school. In terms of trafficking in persons, I can tell you that I lead a delegation that's now going to source territories, and we're partnering. We just came from Colombia uh, about a month back, and we're preparing to go. We just came from Mexico, and we're preparing to go to Colombia on a number of territories, and the Bahamas was commended for its efforts uh, in dealing with trafficking victims. Our presentation in 2015, as well as the presentation here, today and the documents that we sent, evidence that just, just Solai, or you Solai, is not uh, a part, uh, mainly a part of the laws of the Bahamas. Efforts have been made by two constitutional referendums, the latest being in 2016, and both 
and it received, and there's a very entrenched provision in the Constitution of the Bahamas, it received overwhelming support by the Parliamentary Caucus. But it also has to go to the public for voting. And when it went to, to the public for what we a country of laws, that was affected. During those presentations and those public discourse, no less a person, and I, I'm quite certain that uh, Mr. Fred, Mitch, Fred Smith QC would agree, uh, the former president of the Court of Appeals said we did not need to go to, a ref, uh, to change the Constitution to arrive at a solution to some of the problems that we face. And so, in fact, we have implemented, we have just, and it's out for public consultation, the name of the Act, the Immigration, the, yeah. the, the Immigration Act, the National Immigration and Asylum Bill that we sent uh, would identify a number of these issues uh, of which you speak. I can tell you that there has been an overwhelming acceleration in the grant of citizenship. And the Prime Minister has indicated to members of the public, and he's appeared before the, uh, the churches that rem rec uh, represent the immigration, the immigrant community, he has said that everybody within the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, once they, there is that right, by law for them to be granted uh, naturalization or citizenship, it shall be done. And he's been following through with that. And I commend Mr. Smith for saying that this government has made tremendous efforts in this regard to recognize the rights of women and children. Just recently, uh, April 2019, the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights commended the Bahamas for its efforts at the detention center for changing the facilities, for providing new buses, Pardon me? I'm oh, sorry. Okay, for changing, and we provided that information in our bundle for change for new buses, for the, the, the accommodation for women and children, uh, the hospital, uh, for the, the medical attention that they, they, they are now, they, they receive. And so we've been commended for our efforts. And so, there are other issues that was raised, right? But I, I, can, I can say uh, that the government of the Bahamas through it, pardon me? With regard to the University of, of the Bahamas, there is not a distinction between uh, persons who are not citizens of the Bahamas. And there's a policy, there's a policy that once you are born in the Bahamas and you go to the University of the Bahamas, that you're accepted. Pardon me? Yes, and you can show that you, you, were, you were in school. I think one of the things, and this is not an excuse, this is not an excuse, and I quote from one of our former leaders, when he was talking about the drug trafficking errors in the, in, error in the Bahamas. The United States is a country of millions of persons. And he said, at that time, we were a country of 200,000 people, a small populace to get the revenue to provide everything. And we're trying our endeavor best in an economy that was almost uh, turned upside down. And so we're trying our best to collect revenue, to provide schooling, uh, Medical, medical attention, social services, as it, regards, as, it, as it relates to housing. There was a comprehensive report done in the Bahamas on the issue of shanty towns and what we ought to do and the social issues involved therein with women and children living in a community where there's limited access for social services. And the report indicated that we have to deal with that. There's no distinction between the government's uh, attention to the migrant community and the Bahamians. I can tell you that we have just established an environment court for Bahamians, for everybody in the Bahamas, that if you build in contraventions of the building codes and regulations, we have to sort it out because it's too irregular. And so persons are being cited and are being taken to court. But most certainly I can say there are, there are, there are, there are no, to my mind, the, the, the whole issue of xenophobia I think sometimes we get it wrong because someone says, the Prime Minister says, this is how you migrate. This is how you, this is for everybody. It's not singling out any one community. There has to be regulation and there has to be order. But just to reiterate, we have, tri we have tried two ti times for a constitutional referenda, which has failed. And we are a country of laws. The other thing is we've pa we're in the process now of consultation by way of an immigration bill that seeks to remedy a lot of the issues now face in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. But I'm of the view that had this commission had our bundles that were sent in April, uh, a lot of the issues raised 
uh, would have been distilled. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Margaret me ha pedido un segundo. Yes, I wanted to just refer very shortly to, to that and one other is, issue. Um, the two referendums. It is, it is commendable that these attempts were made under the, the, the laws as you have them. But if you see the, the, the mischief which exists in the circumstance that you wish to correct, you clearly recognize it. That's why you use the referendum system twice. And twice means that you need to do education yes. to your citizens. Clearly, so, about the mischief. Clearly. So I know you well. I know you well. I've been going to the Bahamas for a long time. I know you well. We'll get you eventually by working together in partnership. <laughs> but the next point is, in relation to migrants now there, we didn't really go into it with you because I forgot to mention this. I do know you have an independent judiciary. Uh, um, I have a uh, stepson in law in it. And clearly, he would not be in it if would, and be my stepson without me biting his, <laughs> his head off. Is this, but what about what kind of access to the poor migrants have to justice? Do you, because I understand they have no legal aid. If that is so, what would the government intend to do about that? But we will look at the bundle. I certainly will, as country rapporteur, and and we will um, write a note a note to you, but which we also have to disclose to um, civil society. And I do ask, please, if you could accommodate not not frequent but regular meetings with civil society <laughs> to talk together about about what you're doing. You do that with, with the greatest respect. The, the appeared, and it appears mm -hmm. uh, that there, we are coming to conclusions mm -hmm. uh, without, <laughs> without uh, seeing well, the bundle, yeah. without uh, fully delving into the you issues. I, 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 I just said that the good gentleman is like a father. I know, I there heard you. There are discussions. I heard you. Uh, the good gentleman is like a brother. Right. So to say that there should be, there are ongoing, go, ongoing discussions. But Formal. as I said in my presentation, mm -hmm. formal discussions. Yeah. There is some difficulty with this when you do that. Well, then you, and you, can, you can tell them and we have had, we, And my honorable attorney general has said that. Mm -hmm. and he said, you cannot produce deceptive information. We must, we must be on the same playing field. And so what I would invite the honorable commission to do is have a look at our bundle mm -hmm. that we have we sent. Will. And it would uh, elucidate a lot of mm -hmm. issues that were raised here today mm -hmm. that were dealt with mm -hmm. in 2015. I thank you. Yeah. I hope to yeah. be in, in Washington next week, yes, so I will get the bundle. Thank you. Thank you. Ustedes vieron, ¿no? Lo que hizo Margaret. No, yo, sí, bueno, es... Eh, es parte de, de esa muy, muy característica eh, sentimiento del Caribe. Muy bien, la comprendo perfectamente. Eh, yo quisiera, para dar por terminada esta audiencia, volver a señalarles nuestro agradecimiento, la oportunidad. No se trata así de conclusiones, estamos en un proceso eso de, de diálogo, de, de poder eh, eh, buscar los puntos de acercamiento y, y va a depender precisamente de la voluntad del Estado y también de la voluntad de la sociedad civil. En el, el planteamiento que hemos hecho, nuestra posición de servir de puente de comunicación para lo que ustedes eh, co consideren que podemos eh, coadyuvar En, en la preparación de estos, de estos espacios. Eh, 
el comisionado Vargas señalaba, bueno, son como dos puntos distintos, pero yo quisiera concluir la, la audiencia señalando que son las oportunidades para presentar sus posiciones, sus comentarios, su visión o la visión de cada uno. Pero para la sociedad civil y con todo el respeto al, a la representación del Estado, para nosotros como, como comisión tenemos la necesidad de eh, señalar que el hecho de participar en una audiencia no puede ser nunca un motivo de, de cuestionamiento de, de, de ninguna de las partes, ¿no? Y, y, y pidiéndole al Estado la consideración de que también mucho, mucho fragor de, del Caribe que se, que se sale, eh, se nos sale por los poros, y, pero eso no, no significa que se trata de un diálogo. Y como un diálogo tenemos que eh, mantener esa, esa necesidad del de respeto de ambas partes y la consideración de que el hecho de que estén en la audiencia una, una, eh, un grupo de sociedad civil no debe estar eh, siendo cuestionado en, en, su, en sus posiciones. Es, eh, es el, 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 el último aspecto a destacar. Y de esta manera damos por terminado esta audiencia.